For a broader look now at the role cities and other subnational governments can play, we've reached Rodrigo Tavares. He's the founder and CEO of Granito and Partners, a management consulting firm. He has also served as head of the Sao Paulo State Government Office of Foreign Affairs. Sao Paulo State in Brazil is the world's 19th largest economy. Tavares is also the author of the book Para Diplomacy, Cities and States as Global Players. He joins us from New York. Mr. Tavares, there's been a, a chorus of mayors in the United States that have stepped up this past week uh, about the Paris Climate Change Agreement. What should we take from that about the role of cities in international affairs? Well, 55 percent of people live in cities, up from uh, 34 percent in 1960, and the UN expects uh, urban population to rise until uh, around uh, 67, 68 percent uh, by, to, by 2050. So cities do play a fundamental role in international affairs. On climate change, they are uh, about to play an even more significant uh, role. The question is, should they? And the answer is yes. Facts are very compelling. Facts are very straightforward. Two-thirds of the energy consumed on the planet is consumed by cities. Around 90 percent of cities around the planet, they are coastal cities, so they are directly threatened by floating from um, sea level uh, rises or from powerful, uh, from powerful storms. They generate around 70 percent of greenhouse uh, emissions, so they do play a role. And they have been playing a role for a long time now, actually. So in 1992, at the Rio summit, it was the very first time that cities made a commitment, made a pledge to contribute to climate change mitigation. And then they had new pledges in, uh, at the Hearst summit in 2002, at the Rio Plus 20 summit in 2012, which I had a chance to participate in. And over the last uh, years, there has been several international organizations led by the C40, led by uh, Metropolis, by UCLG, by ICLE, by other organizations, making even bolder pledges to mitigate uh, climate change. Do cities, though, have the, the legislative clout, the ability to make the kind of change to meet those kind of international agreements if, as is happening in the United States right now, the national government uh, is going in a different direction? Oh, absolutely. Para diplomacy is the foreign affairs of, of local governments, cities and states. It's not the same as diplomacy at the lower level of analysis. It's two different things. And cities, Alison, they basically internationalize their domestic competencies. So they conduct internal affairs abroad. So climate change affects them directly, affects the populations. That's why they are engaging internationally, taking part in international networks. Just this very same day, in December 2015, when uh, heads of state were signing the Paris Agreement, just in a place nearby, 440 mayors, led by the mayor of Paris and led by the UN Special Envoy, former New York Mayor Mike Bloomberg, they were signing the Paris Agreement, committing to reduce by 80 percent until 2050 the greenhouse uh, emissions. And yes, they have the political legitimacy, they have the economic clout, and they have the legal security to engage in that sort of agreements. What are the other issues where you think cities particularly can play a significant role? Well, you would never see the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Canada going to uh, an international event to discuss transportation, sanitation, or health care. But you would see mayors globally going internationally and discussing these, um, these very issues. So every single issue uh, which uh, uh, is under the clout of uh, local governments, from transportation, sanitation, health care, all that can be internationalized. You, you wrote in your book that you think cities uh, particularly or subnational governments can be more pragmatic. They can be flexible, even experimental. What are you driving at? Why, why do you think that? Well, foreign policy at the, at the national level has uh, close to 2,000 years old, and at the sovereign nation uh, level, it has around three or 400 years old. So it's an old industry. It's an old infrastructure. And sometimes it's not as compelling, it's not as precise, it's not as agile as foreign policy at the city level actually, um, actually is. So cities tend to be more pragmatic. 
they tend to be more opportunistic. They tend to be uh, more talent tangible. And I would say that a foreign policy at the city and state level, it's actually human centric mm. because it's predicated upon the needs of citizens. I want to bring one other element into all of this because one of the fastest growing urban populations is in is in developing countries, is in countries where they don't have the affluence or perhaps even the international business outreach that we're talking about here. Put developing countries and developing cities into this picture. How effective can they be in this? It makes uh, no difference. Mm -hmm. So the foreign policy, the foreign policy, the city or the local government, cities and regions or states, when it's conducted uh, from the development world or conducted from emerging economies, it just makes no big uh, difference. Again, cities and states, they have a lot of uh, economic, uh, they are economic powerhouses. 75% of the world's GDP is epicenter on, uh, on cities. And other statistics, if you like numbers as much as I do, <laughs> out of the, the 30 largest economies on the planet, 12 of, the, 12 of them, they are not national, national states, they are cities or states. Well, I'm in New York right now. The state of New York is richer than uh, Spain or South Korea. Uh, you are asking about a developed uh, country, Brazil, uh, the state of Sao Paulo, it's the 19th largest economy and is richer or has a higher GDP than Argentina, Paraguay, Uruguay, and Bolivia put together. When you look at uh, the C40, for example, uh, which is one of uh, 200 international networks of cities and states that uh, do exist out there. C40 is just one of them, but they have members from all over the world. They have 70 members from all over the world. It could be London, it could be Lima, it could be Washington, and it could be Johannesburg. So paradiplomacy or the foreign affairs of cities and states, it's not a developed country opportunity or exercise. It's a planetary trend. Mr. Tabaris, thank you so much for your expertise on this. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Thank you for having me.